Now that we understand various aspects of relations, let's see how we could determine if a relation is also a function. Now in order for a relation to be a function, every input within its domain must have only one respective output. Now, for example, we have a mapping diagram here for the relation in example five. So here, we have a domain of negative five, negative two, zero, and three. Now negative five only has one respective output. It's negative one. Negative two only has one output, which is zero. And then zero has only one output, it's four. And three as well only has one output. So each one of these inputs in the domain has only one arrow pointing towards a value in the range. This would make this specific relation here a function. Now let's take a look at example six. So here we have a negative four, zero, and one as values within our domain. Now again, if this, is, if this relation is going to be a function, each one of these values must have only one respective output. Now the negative four has one output, which is two. The zero has only one output, which is zero. But right here, with this input of one, it has two different outputs. It has an output of negative three and an output of five. Now because of this, this relation would not be classified as a function. In order for it to be a function, this one must have only one output, but instead it has two. It has an output of negative three and five. So this relation would not be a function. Now let's take a look at another way of determining if a relation is a function. So for these two examples, we have graphs. Now if we're just given a graph of a relation, we could use what's called the vertical line test to see if the relation is a function. Now what the vertical line test does is we take a vertical line and we just sweep it across the entire graph. And if at any point the vertical line touches more than one output on the relation, then it's not a function. Now, as you can see with example seven, as we sweep this vertical line across, it's always touching only one point on the relation. It never touches more than one at the same time. So example seven would be a function. So we could say that this one is a function. So now let's take a look at the relation in example eight and use the vertical line test to see if it is a function. So we'll take the vertical line and we'll start sweeping through it from left to right. Now right now it's only going through one point until we get to right here. Now as you see in this area right here, the vertical line is hitting more than one point on the relation. So it's hitting it right here, right here, and right here. Now because the vertical line is hitting multiple points with this relation, this relation would not be a function. So this relation is not a function. Now that about wraps it up on how to determine if a relation is a function. We're going to learn how to evaluate functions. So let's take a look at example nine. So here we have a function f of x equals three x minus seven. Now before we even try evaluating it, let's understand what this means. So we have f of x now what this is telling us is we have some function called f with an input of x. So whenever we see x, we know that's our input right here. 
So this x right here is referring to our input. Now, what if they decide to actually give us a value for our input? Well, for example, if we put a one in right here, then one must be our input. So a one would go right here as well, because this is our spot for our input that's where the x was in our function. Or if someone said, okay, what if our input is negative 10 right here? So for example, a negative 10 means we'd have an input of negative 10 right here. So when they're asking us to evaluate this function for certain inputs, we just need to put the input into its respective spot. So for example, with f of negative 3, we have f of negative 3. Well, here our input is negative 3. So we'll put that in for our input spot. So now in order to evaluate it, we just need to do the order of operations. So here, first, we're going to work with the multiplication here. We have a positive 3 times a negative 3. Well, a positive times a negative is a negative and 3 times 3 is 9. So we have a negative 9 minus 7. So we'll subtract 7 from that. So that leaves us with a negative 9 minus 7, which gives us a negative 16. So when we evaluate this function with our input being negative 3, we get an output of negative 16. Now we could do the same thing, but now our input is going to be zero. So we'll have our function, and our new input now is zero. So we'll plug zero in for our input, and then we'll just do the order of operations to evaluate it. So first we have three times zero, which is zero, and then minus seven. And zero minus seven, leaves us with a negative 7. So when we evaluate our function for an input of 0, we get an output of negative 7. So let's try this one more time, but now with our input being 2. So we have f of 2. So now our input is 2. So we'll plug 2 in to where our x used to be. And now just do order of operations to evaluate it. So we have 3 times 2 gives us a positive 6 and then minus 7. So now 6 minus 7 will leave us with a negative 1. So when we evaluate this function with an input of 2, we get an output of negative 1. So that's what our function would be with that input. And that's the basics for evaluating a function for a certain input.